tell you, it's, uh, having my brother's junior line medallion yesterday was, that was intense. And I didn't think it was going to be my older brother who broke down, but he did. I thought it was going to be my younger brother, because him and I, we've, we've spent more time together. There's just, that's just the way it's been dealt in years. Because Greg's been overseas for so long. Um, but it was, uh, that got me, like, it got me deep when he broke down. My, my older brother is, he's a good man. He's a really good man. And, but he always strikes me as uh, being so, like, purpose-driven and, like, focused. I think just over the last few weeks, you know, talking with my mom and uh, about some of the stuff that he's going through, it's starting to open me up to the fact that he is human, after all. Because he is, uh, he has literally been kind of like a robot, right? Like, focused, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean, like, focused and driven. And, um, it was, it was pretty incredible because he noticed the love of the room there and, um, and that got to me a little bit when he said that. Because he, uh, yeah, I didn't think it was going to be him. But then as I get to know my little brother as he gets older, uh, he is like one of the most logical people I've ever seen. And he has very few things to say about anything, really. Right? He's a man of few words. So anyway, that was intense. And half my family there was incredible. So. Uh, sorry, I was a little bit off track. So, looking at step eight, uh, it's it's a little bit different for me now. Something happened, and then part of it is the suicides that that have been going on, and, and getting to know family members of, of lost loved ones. Um, but it made me think of like some of the mean things that I've said to people through the years. It, it made me really. Think about step eight, preparing to make those amends. But what came to me really was some of the things that that were said to some of these people, and and how fragile. And I'm sorry if I tear up, but I, like it's been pretty recent that I was with a family that suffered through the loss of a 22-year-old son, and that stuff gets me right because I was suicidal. I was suicidal and. Lots of us were suicidal. And I thought, this is this is interesting because when I sat down the first time to do my step eight, I didn't think about like people who I'd make fun of. Right? Like I thought of people who I stole from, I thought of people who I made hurt physically, but I didn't think about those things that I said to people that could have cut me deeply. And so this this really got me, right? You know, the Robin Williams things kind of started it off for lots of us. Um, and so it was, it was difficult, it was difficult for me anyway, and I, and I don't speak for anyone else, but it was challenging to get away from that when I was thinking about speaking on step eight, because it all of a sudden opened up my list, <laughs> and I had to add some names, right, because part of me didn't want to acknowledge that words cut, right, and part of what got to me was when I was a kid, I was a little bit of a chubby kid, and kids can be mean, right? Um, and some of those things stuck with me, you know, they stuck with me to today. Um, and thinking about that, and body image stuff, and the people that I work with, whether it be male or female, and some of the body image issues that people have, that cause them to do things to their bodies, which are painful, harmful things. It really got me thinking about those words that I use with people sometimes. Thank God not as much today, right? This program is getting me away from doing that more and more, right? But it still comes out sometimes. And it makes it stings me now when I say it. When it comes out loud. When it's in my head, I can kind of like give it to God a little bit better than when it's out there. And I've got to say to someone, you know what? That was uncalled. No matter what they did, there's no right for me to judge someone. And that's good in theory, right? But then when I poke at somebody, I'm judging. I'm, I'm doing something that could potentially cause them harm. And then I know that for me, I have to be a little bit less sensitive. To staying sober and clean for any amount of time, anyone can tell you, we better get some thick skin. Right? Because not everybody's on the same program. Right? Not everybody's on the love and, and, and the, uh, 
Beatitudes of life, Brad. <laughs> so what I thought, what I thought of with um, the scripture tonight, it, I used to think it was talking about somebody else. I used to think it was talking about you, right? And then I, I, the scripture came to me as I was preparing this, and I thought, dude, they're talking about me. It says, so now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them the Beatitudes. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Holy crap. <laughs> I thought it was you. I thought my job was to help you because you were poor in spirit. Right? Until all of a sudden you came to me. I was poor in spirit. I am poor in spirit. Right? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I thought, that's for you guys. Right? Because you're poor in spirit. I'm all right. Right? I'm okay. You know, my dad's a minister. If I shit someone up. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm in trouble now. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. Like I said, poor in spirit. And in mouth. Right? Uh, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be filled, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Like this stuff, cut, cut me deep, like not me deep, with this step eight stuff, right? Because this, this is me, just as it is you, right? Trying to get better, right? Trying to get better. I, I am, let's be honest, right? I covered up my weakness with my, um, aggressiveness. Aggression doesn't mean strong, right? Like I covered up the, the scars and every time someone said, oh, there goes that fat kid again, right? All that stuff is covered up by everything else that we did, that I did, right? Whether it was uh, womenizing, violence, whatever it was, that stuff was covered up. I don't know why, I don't know why that my suicide attempts didn't work, right? And the reason it's emotional for me is because I'm thinking about the family members of these kids, because they're kids, right? So I don't know why I'm here, and they're not, and that goes through my head every time, right? Every time, because there is this connection that we all feel in the rooms. My older brother felt that, right? He felt that connection amongst us, and he, honest to God, probably has never felt that before. Outside of our family, right? But he felt that connection because when I look at a family member of some of the guys, they ask me if I have any experience with this, and I tell them, I choose, as the film said, I choose to not be anonymous. That's my choice, right? I don't have a vocal program or anything like that, press, radio, or film, right? But when someone says, do you have any experience with suicide? I tell them. I haven't actually died, obviously. Right? But we're all connected to our grief. Because we all mourn for someone. At some time. So blessed are the pure of heart. For they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are, who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So when we start living our new life, right, we are taking this risk, right? I used to work for the city, and they used to always say, the right thing isn't always the right thing, right? And I never, I could never get my head around it because the right thing is always the right thing. Thank God I was this variety when I started working for the city, or else I would have been in trouble, right? Because when the right thing is no longer the right thing, I am in trouble, right? But this gives us an opportunity. Step eight, the Bible um, fellowship, it gives us an opportunity to accept the fact that I am the meek. <laughs> You're not the meek, I'm the meek, 
right? I need your help, right? I need your help. I need God's help, because in God I can do all things, right? But of my own devices, I go backwards. I don't take accountability at step eight, right? I don't take the accountability I need to go to step nine and make an honest amends, right? I will talk about step nine because Brad warned me against it. Because he knew that I would try to use all the good stuff for step nine, so his step nine next month will be ruined. Obviously, right? <laughs> because I would obviously do a better job. Okay, that's what he was doing. <laughs> obviously not. Obviously not, right? But it, it helps me take accountability to realize that, you know what, like I've, I've done some stuff to people that I may not have recognized as a men group, right? But that's what this process has taught me over time. More will be revealed, right? I think I probably, I remember Teresa vaguely at some point telling me that early in recovery as we were talking the other day and she was one of the first people I told that I was an alcoholic. She was one of the first people. She, we worked together and I came to her and I knew she was in recovery and I talked to her and told her. Um, and that was where things really started, right? And she reminded me where I now was smoking. Yeah, both of us smoking like chimneys. Oh, yeah, I have no legs of building. Right? But it, as time went on, it, it kind of more is revealed. Right? Things change. My, my idea, like I said, when I sat down to think of step eight, I was thinking, oh, like we made a list, we became ready. But how do I do that? Like I have to, I have to accept the fact that, like, because of the things that I've done, that means I'm no better than anyone. Right? I am, I am accepting the fact that I am human, just like everyone else, right? That separation that I used to give myself from everyone is gone. That's, for me, a part of this process, right? And I use the Beatitudes because I find them beautiful, right? And earlier today, I was trying to think of, I was talking to a friend in the program, and I was trying to think of this old saying I heard, God loves drunks and fools, right? Thank God for that, right? And that's basically what the Beatitudes are telling me, that I'm okay, right? Like God's, God's okay with me, you know? God's okay with me. And this is all about love, right? And I, and I hope that like every week hereafter, we use the Beatitudes, just to make Brad happy. Because that, that makes me happy. So thank you for listening. Hopefully it made some kind of sense. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve.